Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to set up a very simple HTTP web server on the SP32 and do a very simple Hello World application. Uh, in order to, to do it, we are going to need to use an uh, auxiliary li library called the SP Async Web Server, which allows us to set up the server using higher level functions, which means we don't need to worry about the lower level details of uh, setting up uh, socket servers, handling the HTTP protocol details and etc. This will make it uh, much easier to interact uh, with uh, uh, with HTTP clients. Basically, this server, uh, sorry, this library depends on another lower level one, which is the TCP async library. Uh, but I'm not going to cover how to install them in this tutorial because it's kind of uh, boring and uh, and it's uh, the procedure is the usual one to install an Arduino library. But in case you need, I will leave the link to this. Uh, post on my blog which explains in more detail how both libraries can be installed. So moving on to the code and assuming that the libraries are already installed, we are going to start uh, with the includes and basically we need the wifi.edge library uh, so we can connect the SP32 to a Wi-Fi network. One important thing to mention is that later when reaching this server from a client, that client needs to be um, connected to the same Wi-Fi network Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to reach the server. Additionally, we need to include the previously installed SP Async Web Server libraries so you can use its API to set up the server. So like we did in previous posts uh, where it was needed to connect the SP to a network, we need to declare its credentials, namely the um, network name and the network password. I usually put them here in constant so they are easy to, to change later if needed. We're also going to need this Async Web Server um, class object, uh, which will be the object that we use to set up the server, to set up the server routes, and to get started listening to requests. An important thing to mention is that um, the constructor of this class receives as input the port where the server will be listening, and the, basically the client uh, needs to specify the port and the IP address when reaching the when trying to reach the server. Uh, but if we use the default one, the 80, which is the HTTP default one, uh, when we access it using a web browser, basically you just need to put the IP address of the server and it will uh, assume that uh, the server is listening on the default port, so we don't need to specify it uh, explicitly. Of course, that you can use here other ports as long as when uh, uh, connecting to the server, uh, you specify uh, that port explicitly in case it's not the 81. So moving on to the, the setup function, we'll start by opening a serial connection and then we are going to connect the, um, the SP32 to the Wi-Fi network. If you haven't yet uh, checked how to do it, I'll leave a, a link to a previous tutorial that explains in more detail the procedure for co uh, connecting to a Wi-Fi network. Uh, after the connection is established, we are going to, to print the local IP assigned to the SP32 so the client can reach it later. Finally, we are going to move on to setting up the actual HTTP web server, which will be very simple. Basically, as I've uh, already mentioned, what we need to set up are routes. So basically, routes are the endpoints uh, of our server that are valid and that clients can, can um, connect to making HTTP requests. And uh, basically, what we need to define for each route is an handling function that will be executed with our custom code when a request is made to that route. Uh, it typically involves some kind of processing and returning a, an answer back to the client, but of course there are other use cases that can be implemented here. In terms of code, this is done by calling the uh, on method on our async web server object. Uh, as first input, we need to pass the endpoint of the route. In our case, I will be using a simple uh, hello uh, route, it, it will be named hello because this will be a hello world um, program but you can call it wherever you like don't, just don't forget this forward slash at, at uh, the beginning a second argument, we need to specify uh, an enumerated value that indicates um, what will be the, the accepted HTTP methods that can be requested to this route uh, in our case, this is again a simple example and we are going to only allow uh, get requests because basically the client will do the, the get request and receive a hello world message as output. As third argument, and this one is very important, we need to specify an handling function that will be executed whenever a request is made to this route. Uh, 
if you are not acquainted with this notation here, basically this is a C++ uh, lambda function declaration. is more or less an advanced concept of, of that language. It's not so much seen in, in regular Arduino programs, but Arduino is, is uh, built on top of C++. And then we can take advantage of, of these functionalities to make our code more compact. Basically, this is kind of an anonymous function that we can declare inline. Uh, because it will not be reused, uh, we could declare this function like uh, like we declare a regular uh, Arduino function, which is the same as a C++ function. But in this case, we are not going to reuse it, so we can declare it in line here um, and pretty much define the, the the arguments that it will receive and the implementation right away. Uh, this makes the syntax uh, the syntax much much shorter. One important thing to mention here is that the signature of this function needs to be uh, needs to respect um, uh, a type defined by the the ASP async web server libraries so it, the implementation can be whatever you want but the signature of the function needs to respect uh, a predefined signature and basically it needs to return void and it needs to receive an object of this um, a pointer to an object of this uh, class, a sync web server request, which we will basically use uh, later to return the, the answer to the client. So this is basically the the, um, the arguments of our function, and between here between brackets we have the the body, the implementation of our function. And as I've said, usually we have some kind of logic here, and we then uh, return a, um, an answer to the client. In our case, we are just going to return an art coded hello world message and how. We are going to, to use this request object uh, pointer that is passed by the framework. This is implicitly passed to the frame, by the framework to our function when the request is made to, to, to this route. So we don't need to worry about fetching this object from anywhere because the framework will take care of everything. And then we need to use this notation because we are not going to receive the object but rather a pointer to it. And then we need to call this send method. The send method is overloaded in many ways because there are many ways that we can return the answer to the client. But we are going to use the, one of the simplest, which is uh, when sending an HTTP response back to the client, we need to, f to define an HTTP code. Um, 200 basically is, is the code for OK. Everything went, uh, went OK in the server. Uh, here is your answer. The second argument is the content type uh, of the response that we are going to return to the, to the server. So, sorry, to the client. So the client knows how to interpret it. We are going to return a, a very simple text plain L word message, but we could be returning like uh, HTML code, an image, um, JSON, whatever, something different. And we need to tell to the client how we should interpret the response. So in our case, it will be just plain text. This is defined by the HTTP standard. If you have any doubt um, regarding the type you should use uh, for any use case you may face, uh, just look for it in the, in the HTTP standard. Finally, we need to return uh, the content we want to, to return to the client. And in this case, it will be a very simple L word string. Uh, nothing special here, but this is a very introductory tutorial and we'll cover more complex use cases later. And that's it. Basically, we binded. We specify the route and we binded the, an ending function uh, to it. And now the server is basically configured uh, for our simple use case. Uh, there's only one thing left to do, which is calling this uh, begin method, which takes no arguments and basically starts the server. And from this point onward, it should be listening to HTTP GET requests. Now, one thing that I would like to highlight is the fact that this is, as already mentioned, an asynchronous uh, web server. Uh, the meaning of this uh, is that uh, we don't need to constantly pull or, or periodically pull some kind of, of object or server object to check if there are clients. Basically, from this point onward, we can we could co code whatever we wanted in the uh, in this loop function without worrying anymore about our server because we know that um, when this endpoint is is called by a client, this function uh, will execute as a callback uh, everything done under the hood. Uh, if you are like me and if you have used uh, the the web server solution for the ASP8266 uh, in the past, 
Note that the, the behavior was completely different. It was synchronous and periodically we need we'll need to call an handling client handling function um, in the in the main loop that would trigger uh, under the hood the execution of all the callbacks and uh, of all the route handling functions. In this case, we no longer need to worry about it. Other thing that I would like to point out is that although I'm using these libraries on the SP32, they are also compatible with the SP8266, uh, and in my personal opinion, they are a much better solution than the, the original uh, web server library. So if you are on the using the um, SP8266, I would really recommend you uh, to switch to this library because I think in the long term this will be the definitive solution and the better one. So uh, now that I've I've coded everything, in my case I've already pulled the code beforehand with the credentials from my uh, home Wi-Fi network. Uh, don't forget when uploading your code to to um, to put the correct ones for for your Wi-Fi network. So after that, if we open here the the serial monitor, I have already mine opened. We see here the 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 loop while the SP32 is trying to connect to the Wi-Fi network. And at the end, it will print this uh, IP address, which will be the local IP address of the SP32 uh, on the on the Wi-Fi network. And this is the one I need to use in we need to use in our clients to reach the server. In our case, we are not going to code any HTTP client to make things quick, and we are going to simply use a web browser because basically a web browser acts as an HTTP client. When we go to a website, your browser will be doing an HTTP GET request to fetch the content. So basically, we don't need to code a custom solution. So when I'm, I'm typing this, um, this uh, URL, basically, basically I need to put here HTTP. Some, some, if you just put IP, some, some uh, browsers uh, do the resolution automatically, others don't. So my, my recommendation is to put here this HTTP column slash slash, the IP address of your SP32, and it will be most likely be different from mine, so don't worry uh, if that's the case. And in our case, since our port uh, is 80, is the default HTTP one, we don't need to specify it, but if you were using a, a different one, let's say uh, 8080, you, you had to, to write it like this, okay? In our case, since since we uh, are using the default one, the browser will use it and uh, and we don't need to worry about that. And as you can see here, it already added because I've already tested this code, but then we need to put the slash and the route that we want to contact. In this case, it will be the hello route we have defined in the code. Then we can press enter. And as you can see, it does the resolution for me. It removes the HTTP uh, column slash slash part, but uh, some browsers don't. And as you can see, it is the hello world um, message that we, we return to the client in the code and everything matches what is expected. So, hope you have enjoyed this, uh, this introductory tutorial. Uh, I would like to say that these libraries are awesome. The authors did a, a tremendous job. It's, it's really useful, it works very well, and it has plenty of more functionalities that we are going to cover in future tutorials. And I also recommend you to explore the um, GitHub documentation because there are plenty of other examples and, and suggestions there. And once again, hope you have enjoyed and thank you very much for watching.